but victory over four for today would go a long way towards guaranteeing a return to the Premier Division. Jock Brown was at Dens Park. A long view of Dens Park with the floodlights of Tannadice in the background. And these are the Dundee players entrusted with the task of maintaining promotion momentum. John McQuillan and Stuart Beattie are back in midfield at the expense of Maxi Christie and Grant McMartin. Player manager Simon Stainrod has relegated himself to the bench with Paul Ritchie selected to give a different dimension up front. He'll be partnered there by Billy Dodds. At 23, he's the main goal threat to Forfar. Signed from Chelsea in 1989, he scored 19 times this season to help his club's promotion bid. And the new Falfer manager Tommy Campbell has kept his team largely unchanged while he assesses his new charges. Dave McKinnon is suspended, but 19-year-old Tony McCauley is back. And otherwise, these are the men who drew last week against Sterling Albion. And one familiar face in the lineup is 35-year-old John Holt, who returns to one of his former clubs. Although he'd a spell with Infirm that he's best known for a fine career at Dundee United, which brought him three Scottish Cup final appearances and a League Championship medal in 1983. And the referee this afternoon, the very experienced figure of Jim Renton from Cowden Beef in his 16th season as a grade one official. So the pitch in excellent condition, sunny overhead conditions, but a lot of tension in the air as the league go into the closing stages of their bid to make Premier League status for next season. And they have a very difficult task to get back in the goal scoring trail here because they've been struggling in recent times there's a free kick and he looking for offside as that ball was played through for Gary White and free kick to Forfar and they have some wind assistance here which may tempt a long range effort at goal played back there to Macaulay there's a deflection and that was close well, it would appear to be deflected, but referee Renton is not interested in appeals there for a corner kick. Well, the ball not sideways here for young Tony McCauley. He hit that well enough and certainly appeared to come off Gordon Chisholm's head. White playing it on. One across is made by Petre. He's tackled well by Stuart Forsyth. It's a corner kick to Forfa. Alec Hamill, the Forfa skipper, goes across to take this. Going a kick with packed penalty box now. That is forced there towards D. Campbell on the line and a bit of pushing inside the area. Frustration there for the four for players. But Dundee certainly didn't look too convincing here defensively as this ball came in, was bundled towards the line and helped away by Campbell. Referee gave the free kick. cross, there's Chisholm and Scott Thompson did just enough Campbell finds BD again Winter's going to get a bit of nods in the air as you would expect and Stevie Campbell BD taking on McKenna who tried to bring him down the crossbar from Chisholm. Lodge locks it back in. And Ritchie and Chisholm in the air together, trying to combine. But for to survive. And that has given the Dundee supporters some substantial encouragement. McCauley. Gary White attempting the layoff. Oh, showing George Winter where he wanted the ball played. Lost it forward. Can't play by Campbell. Chisholm to Dinny. Dinny again. No dodge. There's McQuillan. Dodge again. Space for a shot at goal, I think. This is good play by Dodds. Everything except the finish. 
Well, it was the good thing the ball on himself, Billy Dodds, and he almost reaped the reward. Taking the ball here, he had too much space from a focal point of view. He then dragged the ball away to the first marker. Then ran past Jimmy Bunn. Then took on John Holt. The ball bobbled slightly as he struck it. Ball holds up well for Richie. This is Dodds. He has McCall in space in the middle. And Thompson did extremely well there with that diving challenge. Well, what an opportunity that was for Dundee. And Scott Thompson was left totally exposed there. This is McCall. Well, there's Chisholm available. Now Dinny. Quillen again. Try and hold the marker back down to Richie. Good play there by Billy Dodd. He judged the flight of the high ball better than John Holt. And that was undoubtedly a chance. See here as the ball came across from McQuillan. Holt was up with Dodds who won it well and the shooting chance was on for Richie. Simon Steinrod, the player manager, certainly has lots of food for thought for the interval. And there by McCall. Queuing up there. Beside him, Jimison. And the whistle there brings the first half to an end. The Dundee supporters still very anxious indeed about this promotion challenge. For, for a battle extremely well, making life difficult for Dundee, who's closest to a goal came when the skipper Gordon Chisholm went up to head one good cross to the left against the crossbar. And that apart, the former defence has been thoroughly convincing, and Dundee still have it all to do. Half time is Dundee nil, four for nil. So Dundee face a crucial 45 minute period now with good news from the other promotion matches, giving the uh, support us some encouragement at this stage but then he will be thinking only in terms of getting the necessary two points themselves this afternoon then they can worry about what happens elsewhere they certainly haven't had any difficulty at all with four for in earlier matches this season one four two and three nil at station park four for and four one here at dens in the earlier matches so they would be expecting to do well enough here. McQuillan and McCauley together again. It's Hamill's interception. Now BD. Dodds trying to get away from Winter. That's good running by Dodds. Such an elusive little striker. Aiming that for McQuillan. Who came in very strongly there. He was followed all the way though by Tony McCauley. So the young for midfield player did his defensive duty good play this by Dodd look at the way he holds off Gordon Winter strong and quick able to check things now have a look around and he spots McQuillan making the run in the far corner of the box and it's behind the goal chances on now for PD and once again it's Scott Thompson to Thorpe's rescue top-class goalkeeping. Well, what a difference that might have made, but I need to settle them completely. But they were denied by the former Dundee United goalkeeper, Scott Thompson. Here's Morris. Now Petrie. There's McKenna. And it's not the way from Pride by Campbell. But for keeping the play deep inside the Dundee half. Space now. Dodds on the left, Richie's on the right, McQuillan also is up. Dodds trying to make the cross count, Richie's McQuillan. Great play by McQuillan. Dundee are in front. And the sense of relief around Dance Park is amazing. Well, this was an excellent finish by McQuillan. His third goal of the season, set up by 
carefully dodged. She wasn't prepared to play a hopeful ball inside. Tried to pick out the cross accurately. Came off the head of Holt to McCullough. That's good, good work. And an excellent finish. Well, John McQuillan back in the side this afternoon and repaying his manager's faith. Very slick footwork from McQuillan inside the penalty area. And it helps it on for Pride. Throw goes to Forfar. Forfar trying to hit back quickly. There's Morris playing it in. Clearance from Jimison reaches Hamill. Pride is offside. Simon Stainrod relieved, no doubt. See his side go in front. has given that away it's a gift for Paul Ritchie one of the youngsters celebrating style Dundee perhaps sensing now that promotion is assured a dreadful defensive error this but it was taken brilliantly it was Gordon Winter who looked up tried to play a pass to one of his teammates inside he went straight to Ritchie he knew the goalkeeper was off his line and he beat him comprehensively with a first time ever. Oh, what a good goal that was by Richie, his first goal for Dundee. And what a time to get it. Holt's header. White comes deep to collect. McCall again. Last well, great play by McCall. He's brought down by McKenna. He'll be in trouble. Now the interpretation of the referee is crucial here. If he decides that that foul prevented a clear goal-scoring opportunity, Ian McKenna could be ordered off. It was great play by McCall. It did appear to be in on goal there until he was brought down just at the edge of the penalty area. Now the referee clearly deciding it was for the cover for McKenna. There was Ian McCall and McKenna challenging him for the rear here. There was the foul. McCall did appear to be through and goal, and I think Ian McKenna might be considering himself fortunate to remain on the field. Lodge leaves it, there's McCall, who all did his job, back with McQuillan. And Gary White this time closing him down quickly. It's a chance in the break here for Foffa. Hamill, now Petrie. Corley calling for the ball on the near side here. And that came off the crossbar and had been deflected. Well, Tony McCauley shaking his head there in disbelief, I think. It certainly wasn't the kind of effort that he expected to score from. So the McCauley had lots of space here on his left foot. Plays it in there. It came off John McQuillan. Came looping down in the crossbar. I think Jim Layton thought that was going over. Free kick goes to Forfa. Morris sending in the cross. Header by White, and that's a great goal from Forfa. Gary White's header makes things very tense again for Dundee in the closing stages. The goal greeted with silence, but what a fine header this is. Cross from the right, Gary White, you'll see coming in here, certainly not well enough marked. And that's a fine, powerful looping header, and Leighton is beaten. And suddenly, the nerves return, and anxiety goes around the terraces once more. The change is being made now by Dundee. The player coming off is Billy Dodds. Trains been having a word there with the fourth bench. Chenham is coming on too quickly, I think. So off goes Billy Dodd, on comes Eddie Gallagher. His career here at Dens Park, open with a real scoring burst. So a hat-trick can score, that's for Hill. And his second game for Andy. A couple of his first at Hamilton. 
scored some vital goals against promotion contenders, Sherry Gallagher already for Dundee against Hamilton, a couple, and Thistle hat trick, both away from home. There's Gallagher, that's for Ritchie, chance now to go through and goal. Gallagher's calling for the ball. The goal itself, that's a great effort by Ritchie. Well, the young striker completely out of luck there. Well, I think if he's being completely honest, he may well accept that he was looking for Eddie Gallagher here. But he's very unlucky not to find Gallagher or the net. As he played that ball across, Thompson was certainly beaten by the flight of the ball. Gallagher couldn't quite get there. Five minutes remaining. Could there be another twist in this match before the end? There by Campbell, flashing there with Petrie, and the referee is going across there. He saw a little bit of aggravation there, so the linesman whose flag was up. Petrie. Across from Byrne to Winter. Here's by Dinny, there's Chisholm. Gallagher, Richie, Gallagher now in the clear, this could tie it up for Dundee. That's brilliantly finished by Gallagher. There's no doubt now about the outcome. The two strikers congratulating each other. Richie the provider and Gallagher the finisher. He's always had this finishing instinct, Eddie Gallagher, and you look at the way he commits Scott Thompson and chips the ball into the corner. It really was top-class finishing by Gallagher, and the pressure once again is off. 3-1 to Dundee. Surely now there could be no way back for Thorpe. Turned back by Winter. Right, it's overhead effort. Leighton couldn't get to that, it's cleared off the line. Turned away by Stevie Campbell. Well, you have to hand it a fourth, but they're so determined. Stevie Campbell looking towards the linesman there for some help. The ball scrambled away there. And we'll see how this happened. The only effort from the line was half blocked. Jimison's header back was pressured instantly on Jim Leighton from McKenna. And it was Stevie Campbell to the rescue. It's Simon Stainrod, the player manager, coming on. He will replace Stuart Beattie, who's just back from injury. Stainrod will go into midfield, I reckon, in the closing moments. Doesn't want to miss the end of the game, I reckon. The celebrations are liable to begin in earnest. Ian Pride with a corner. Moving away with the side, as far as Hamill. Leighton coming to claim that. Decisive punch to safety. Back it goes to Jim Leighton. Paul Ritchie has certainly served his club well this afternoon. Jim Leighton will be in Premier Division football next season. And the final whistle goes. Dundee have made it. Eddie Gallagher's clinching goal. Two goals is straight off five minutes from the end. It was a very tense, difficult first half. From the point when John McQuillan scored the opening goal in 52 minutes, the new in the driving seat. Paul Ritchie got the second. A setback when Gary White heading one home for Fulton, but Eddie Gallagher settled any arguments with a delightful finish near the end. So Willie Jimison, who's sampled for the football before goes off. John McQuillan will have that new experience to save him next season. But Dundee finishing the campaign in some style. Simon Stainrod being congratulated there, obtaining confirmation, no doubt, of the results elsewhere. That cheer tells the story. Dundee are in the Premier Division for next season after this result, winning the match by three goals to one.
Well, you took some risks in a sense because you changed the team around, the system, the personnel, leaving yourself out. What was the thinking behind all that? Well, on, on Monday, Paul Ritchie played against uh, four for the reserves with one or two first team players playing as well. And he scored four goals. Now, his confidence was sky high. Uh, I don't think Forfa would have liked to have seen him on the team sheet, you know, when the when the team lines went in. And uh, I just thought it was a positive move. I was always there if, if there was a problem. And uh, thankfully it worked out how I, uh, how I planned it the first time. <laughs> Were you aware of what was happening elsewhere? Uh, yes, I, I knew the half-time scores. And, uh, but, I mean, a score is just that. It's a scoreline. Anything can happen after half-time. And uh, but then the, the crowd got very excited at one one stage, and uh, I think we were winning two one two nil at the time, and then we conceded a goal. So uh, I thought you know it was probably prudent to put Eddie Gallagher on to try and liven the front scene up again, and uh, he did just that and scored a scored a great individual goal. What was the effect of the first goal that John McLean scored? <coughs> well, it certainly uh, settled nerves. But I mean, what I find is that if if you get a goal, then if you can get straight back into the game quickly, you can often get another one, and that's just what we did. And uh, it's just uh, perfect, really, because championships are never easily won. And, uh, and this certainly wasn't easily won, but it was won with a great deal of dedication, a lot of preparation and tremendous character from the players. Simon, congratulations. Well done. Thanks. Dundee back in the Premier Division, almost certainly as champions. And Derek, your hometown team back in the big time. Absolutely delighted for them. I think they've deserved it, Dougie. I think the last five games they've been very, very nervous. That showed in their play, but it is over a season and uh, they've got the three goals today that'll take them there. And as, bit, as has been said before, Dundee always should really be in, in the, the top level of Scottish football, shouldn't they? They have, and they have a stadium that's uh, for the, the, the Premier Division. They have a man now, Ron Dixon, who's going to put a lot of money into the club now, I think. Now that they're in the Premier Division, I think money will be spent because Dundee have to get better players if they're going to stay in the Premier Division again. One thing does occur to me tonight, I, w I wonder how Ian Monroe feels, for example, because he did three quarters of the work in getting them yeah. promotion. I think he'll be delighted. He'll be sitting there watching this tonight, a little tear in his eye. That is my side out there, basically, and it is in them. I'm sure he'll be the first one to phone up and congratulate the boys. Let's take a look at uh, some of the football Dundee played, because they do like to play a passing yeah. game, and that's encouraging. They haven't just battled and yeah. fought and played the long ball game to win promotion. They can play some very nice football. Well, when I think you get straight you get small strikers, do you mean? You can't afford just to lump the ball at the park because there are too many big centre halves there. They like to play through the midfield. They do have the ball players, and uh, when they get the chance, they'll find little Dodzy who'll come off and shield it. And they get midfield men forward, and they are a good side to watch. Certainly in the first division, whether they get the same space in the Premier Division, uh, we'll need to see that next season. Here's a young man here, he's a tremendous player, very very confident young man. A wee bit unlucky there not to finish. What a goal that would have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We see it again, it could have been the goal this season. I think we've said that about ten times this season. They can break very quickly too, though, can't they, from defence into attack? Well, the good thing about Dundee is it doesn't matter if they're at home or away. They play exactly the same way. They score goals, and sometimes that's why they lose goals, because they go chasing more and they leave themselves uh, free at the back. As you suggested, though, Ron Dixon, uh, the Canadian multimillionaire who's the chairman of the club, looks as if he's willing to spend money. And I think, to be fair, they will have to spend money. I don't yeah. think, to be fair, the players who have got them there are yeah. going to keep oh, them They're, the they're certainly good enough to, for, to win the first division but in the Premier Division it's a different story and uh, there's a man with the right few quid there and I think in David Holmes a man will spend it wisely for him. Yeah, well, uh, talking of David Holmes, the Dundee Chief Executive spoke to Jock Brown after the game and outlined that there are plans not only on the pitch but off it as well. It showed a lot of courage by Mr Dixon to come here and put in one and a half million pounds and buy a club that was uh, ailing to say the least. They were top of the division but ailing. Um, so the next step is to to try and get into the Premier League, establish itself uh, where we should be, because Dundee, irrespective of what people are saying, I, I believe and still believe there's a big latent support here for Dundee. But what we've got to do is, it's all right going and talking to them and talking about the game. We've got to prove it in the park here, and that's what we're about to do. There's ambitious uh, plans afoot now. We've got planning permission in for a new stand across here, a dog track going around the track here, a nice rink at the back. All these things are going to make this into a big PLC. But the main thing that's going to happen here has got to be football. Now, getting into the Premier Division was a big step for us because it gives us a bigger grant being a Premier Division side. So the future for Dundee is onwards and upwards, as far as I'm concerned.